I am on a mission to visit a California mission. So come along with me as we go to Mission San Juan Batista. So I knew it was a slight risk coming here on New Year's Eve. The gift shop is closed today, unfortunately. Um, what can you do? It's New Year's Eve. I had a feeling some things would be closed. But I mean, you could still walk the grounds and see things like this. Uh, the last time I was here, I was actually in third grade because uh, I grew up in California. And so learning about the missions was part of um, the California school experience, especially in elementary school. Uh, and you can see here that there are there is quite an extensive um, walkway down this way. And this is one of the missions uh, along El Camino Real in California, or the Royal Road, uh, which the Spanish colonists had created as a way to transport uh, both themselves, their items, their trade, and their faith. Uh, and so this is a historic building. It says here, founded in 1797. Um, it's the 15th of the 21 missions, uh, largest and only church with three aisles, dedicated in 1812. So it has been quite a while since I was last here, but uh, it is nice to see it again and to see again a piece of California history uh, and a recreation of the surrounding, actually it's not even a recreation, I think these are the original old buildings, we'll take a look at those in a little bit. Uh, but you can see the bell tower is here, and behind me is the Mission Cemetery, and it says, buried in the sacred ground, and the unmarked graves are about 4,300 Mission Indians, Spanish, and Pioneer settlers. Uh, so, that is actually just behind this way. And you can see some very old graves through this fence. Now the statue that I was uh, talking in front of earlier is of Father Junipo Serra, who was the founder of the California Mission. So this statue is actually featured pretty prominently across California, um, various, of course, uh, mission sites, and uh, even along some of the freeways. Uh, I believe there's a pretty large statue of him off of Highway 280, so uh, again, another pretty important part of California's history. So I mentioned El Camino Real earlier, and it looks like this is a site of where it originally was and it mentions here that it was used from 1797 until 1850 you probably can't see that plaque because of the shadows um so you know basically if you went north that away you would hit mission santa clara and if you went down this away you would hit the mission san carlos Baromeo de carmelo i probably really butchered that name but um basically that's you know, the the ways to connect. This is uh, kind of like a hub, central area between Northern and Southern California. And there's quite a bit of farmland, as you can see, just out this way, surrounding the mission. A very sort of different feeling than uh, kind of the hustle and bustle of the Bay Area. A little more peaceful out here, a little more small town, Kind of nice though. Very quiet right now. Again, I think this is largely due to the fact that everything is closed today because it's New Year's Eve. Um, so I almost think I have these, gr these grounds mostly to myself. There's a few people here and there, but not too many. Uh, and then there's a statue of St. John the Baptist or San Juan Batista, hence the mission's name, just over here. Now, the San Andreas Fault uh, basically runs along down here. 
uh, very close to where the mission is. I'm not sure exactly where the fault line is, but there was a marker um, up towards the mission. But when I looked at maps, it basically said that the fault was extremely close to here and to the mission up there. So it's somewhere around here. And if I got the placement of it wrong, that's not my fault. Sorry, had to do it. But it is a pretty infamous fault that has caused quite a few destructive earthquakes, including the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, which I was five when that happened and I experienced and that was a seven point something quake I believe so hopefully there will not be an earthquake while I'm walking on this because that will not be good and around the mission is this historic park with a lot of historic buildings as you can see here including a hotel and the plaza hall so now we'll go inside the stable building and so far looking at it, it looks like it's pretty stable. Had to do that one too. There's this guy watching over this room. And then there's a lot of various wagons and forms of transport on display. And it seems pretty bare bones to ride along in one of these wagons back here. It's not, it doesn't look like the most comfortable or protected from dirt or the elements. Uh, so it might have, that might have, I'm sure it was a very bumpy ride. Uh, and then they have some very old cars here, automobiles. Is this, no, this one's actually for horses too. It looks like a precursor to the automobile. Um, so a little bit fancier on this side. Uh, but I don't know that this one actually looks kind of scary. Is it just me? <laughs> this one looks pretty scary. Um, it's from the 1830s, it says. And it was a family carriage. And this is pretty interesting, too. It's an old fire truck, I guess. It's not really a truck um, or engine. Not really fire truck or engine. Um, I guess fire carriage. But this is what you'd have to depend on to put out fires back in the day. I wonder how long it took with just buckets of water. Couldn't have been too effective, but I don't know. And the Plaza Hotel across the way here is where the museum for the historic buildings around this area um, is located and starts and they even let you tour the hotel itself. So we'll go inside and take a look. All right, so this is once I was inside the museum uh, and they had the wedding dress from one of the original settlers in the San Juan Batista area, uh, including uh, some of the other remnants like gloves like you see here, uh, old bank notes, which were interesting, eyeglasses. It's always kind of weird to see you know, things that somebody actually used over a hundred years ago on display, knowing that somebody used that. And, for instance, somebody signed uh, this register for the hotel. And, of course, it's always weird to think, well, these people are probably, not probably, they're no longer with us, but uh, uh, kind of a, you know, sort of like a, another reminder when you look at museums like this, that at one time other people lived in the area, and, you know, this was a full-functioning hotel, which seems small once you were inside, but at the time was sort of the largest uh, hotel. And here is uh, kind of like one of the uh, office areas and then the staircase leading up to uh, various bedrooms and including this gambling room uh, which had a newspaper display for one of the outlaws at the time. I didn't quite read all of it but they featured some of that as well. And then this was kind of the large saloon type of room uh, with a billiard table and uh, it was interesting to mention that horses actually came in through the door sometimes and at night they'd clear the area and let more people sleep in there to fit more people in the hotel so that was kind of weird. And here's an example of an old room at the hotel or, or the inn. Um, you can see here I mean pretty basic it's 
literally just a bedroom. You don't get the luxury of having an attached bathroom or plumbing. You have kind of a wash basin and a couple of beds, so nothing too fancy, but at the time. And here's an example of another room that you can see and kind of fancier. Now this is the back side of the Plaza Hotel, which I just went through. And um, pretty interesting rooms overall, and I'll either just show them or show you in a sec. But then over here is a, a two-story outhouse um, that's actually pretty small. And what I read was the men would be able to use this bottom floor. And we can see the old great outhouse here. And women and children had to use the top floor. So it's actually a two-story outhouse. Um, which must have been pretty fun for anyone using it. And it's pretty tiny and small, and I'm guessing did not smell that great, but I'm sure it's better than just going off the road if you've been traveling uh, and there are no rest stops or bathrooms uh, back then like there are now. So you had to use things like this. And then this is an old oven that was used, and the sign over here said it took about three hours for it to actually be ready, for the ashes to be removed, and for the oven to heat up, for the food to be put in at that point. So just when you think uh, waiting for your oven to heat to 350 degrees is annoying because it takes 10 minutes, back in the day it took three hours. So that's a nice, good reminder anytime you get frustrated with your oven. But this is an old sort of cooking area. Which means, back in the day, just if, it, if it's anything like how I am today, it's probably an area that I personally would not have used very much myself. <laughs> would have relied on others. And then here is Plaza Hall, which was once a boarding house for the Mission women, and then eventually became um, a family home. And uh, town meetings were actually held upstairs. So this building here is the Wash House. And I'm curious, oh, okay. So, I was thinking this, I was thinking this would be like a bathhouse, but it looks more like, oh, it is. It was laundry in the room before, and then one room over is a tub where you can actually wash. Um, again, very different from our standards of bathrooms today, so always interesting to see kind of the Things people used back in the day for both washing themselves and their clothes. It is awesome when a city is able to preserve its old town area and old buildings like this one up here. And old buildings like this one up here to kind of keep, again, to keep history alive and um, sort of breathing. It's not just in a museum. These are actual buildings people used and walked through and I don't know. I just always really like that. So that's, that's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. Makes it fun. And even on its main street kept a lot of its old buildings so it has that nice sort of small California town feel. There are also quite a few antique shops so if you're into that there are quite a few on this street. So like I mentioned earlier it is New Year's Eve and I've got to get home and actually clean my house for guests coming over tonight. So I should probably get on top of that and head back. But it was a nice outing. I'd recommend it if you're in California. So it is time to hit the old dusty trail, or at least the freeway. and head on home. So, uh, I will do that now. Um, again, I would have recommend this. I didn't, didn't get to actually go inside the mission, unfortunately, because it was closed, because it's closed on New Year's Eve. So, just my luck. Had a feeling, you know, New Year's Eve, when you go anywhere, it's kind of iffy if it'll actually be open. And uh, the State Historic Park and the buildings I showed were open, uh, but the mission itself, unfortunately, was not. So I couldn't go inside. We just walked around outside. But um, pretty interesting part of California's history. Definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe for more videos. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.